Hi, everyone. Welcome to No Kill in Motion. I'm here today with Claudine Voss and Chelsea Gerber, who we'll introduce in a second. I'm David Smith from No Kill Colorado. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, mostly at a story that came out of Katy, Texas, that Chelsea was very involved in and, and Claudine has support, supported. Um, the animal shelter there was not performing in any way. Chelsea uh gerber was actually an animal uh control employee there at the time and she saw things that were just absolutely wrong she came forward she actually uh brought allegations forward it's you know from what i've i've uh, researched through proper channels um and things went really awry we'll talk more about that as we go forward uh but to start i want you guys to introduce yourself so claudine i know you very well we worked on other things before you mm -hmm. are a tireless advocate what, what are you <laughs> doing in in texas not just related to katie but you know what, what what are you doing down there oh thanks for this opportunity david um i have i'm claudine vass i i'm the founder of Forbidden pets of life and we're a 501c3 no-kill advocacy group in Fort Bend County. Um, we started about eight, nine years ago, and uh, we have five shelters in Fort Bend County, so we have been advocating for no-kill very, very vigorously. Um, Pre-COVID, we're more active because we could do events, and so in the first five years, we had about 170-some events, which are adoptions and speaking engagements and also uh, appearances in um, public meetings, speaking, meaning speaking in front of city councils and County commissioners. Uh, we also organized a lot of adoption events because offsite adoption events were not um, popular, were not even talked about at that time. Um, so, all that we, in the first five years, I looked at the two shelters, which is Rosenberg and also Fort Bend County Animal Shelter. We've real looked at looking at the data, we learned that those two shelters in those five years um, have saved an additional. 8,234 animals. Wow. Okay. Because of public demand and awareness and advocacy. And at the same time, we also realized that, you know, it was really the best to bang for the bucks because our budget was really low. It's not nothing close to what a rescue group would do. So, you know, that's why I kept going and I kept doing what I was doing. And then when, um, you know, that thing happened in, in, Rose, in, in Katy, uh, we were very busy with Rosenberg and and in some other areas in the outlying areas but i was like you know i gotta go talk to that girl <laughs> so seeked her out and that's how we met <laughs> chelsea okay well so chelsea uh why don't you tell us what you were at the beginning of this in 2019 and uh and and to where you are now but of course don't tell the whole story just talk about you and then we'll talk about specific questions about what happened sure so in 2019, um, I was looking for a job to get back into the workforce. Um, my daughter was about three at the time, and I was bored. Prior to that, I worked for the city of Sugarland, um, and I had always wanted to go into animal control. And at that time, there was a part-time position posted with the city of Katy. I applied and got hired um, in 2019, May, and uh, it Right from the beginning, there were some very uh, questionable practices, but um, as time went on and I started studying for my certification courses and, and using my own law enforcement knowledge and degree and stuff, I knew that it wasn't just little surface issues. Um, they were extremely deep. Uh, so in June of 2020 is when I requested my first meeting uh, with my chief of police and filed a complaint that occurred again in December of 2020. That's when the investigation officially launched and I was terminated in August of 2021 following those investigations. So the animal control in KD falls under the police department, correct? Yes, we are the main division of KD police department. And how many animal control officers were in that department or section, whatever you called it? So we had a, a supervisor, a department head, David Brown, one full-time officer, Spencer Antonoro, and myself, the part-time officer. Okay. And so as I understand, you started collecting data um, 
uh, which is uh, interesting. It's something we've actually talked about on on No Kill in Motion before is Section 1983. I'm not sure if you if that came up during your okay that came up. I mean, as a tax funded organization, um, you know, volunteers and staff are allowed to come forward with things they see. They are protected. They often don't know that. Um, the way governments actually try to handle that, they try to hide that until uh, yeah. someone figures that out. And so, you know, it could be it could be pretty courageous to actually do that because it doesn't feel like you're in the position you are. But, you know, we learn that later on, usually. And I know that that's probably what you went through. So what are some of the things, you know, give us the idea now of the things that you saw and how things changed over that year while you started really paying attention? My very first day um, on the job, we got called to a dog that was in the woods and she had a bunch of puppies and she was living in some like old uh, refrigerator pieces. It's hard to explain. And, and she was reactive, rightfully so. Um, she, we, we darted the dog. And mind you, this is my first day. So they tranquilized um, mama and I named her mama. And um, we transported her and all the puppies back to the shelter. And one thing that stuck out to me was she was still heavily, heavily sedated. And uh, David dragged her into the building by a leash, like by her neck. And I offered to pick her up and carry her in. And he talked about a back injury and stuff. And he, it's fine. And his comment was, she won't remember it anyway. And okay. I was like... Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, yeah, yes. that's, that's pretty, pretty rough first day. And then, and then I, I mean, I saw, uh, I, I think the allegations, uh, falsifying records, which is the only one that you actually got, um, uh, that improper records handling, right? But improperly securing lethal drugs, improper dosages given to animals, which, um, you know, some of the stories there are horrific. Animals in the garbage, uh, improper euthanizing in, in general. Uh, when did these things come up and, and, and what did you see? So quickly after I started working there, there's a little bit of a backstory. I was introduced to a woman named Angie Wells. Um, she was very good friends with David and she was introduced to me as a rescue group. Uh, and she was constantly at the shelter. Um, if we did get something out with a rescue, it was usually with Angie Wells. Um, and so about April of 2020, early 2020, we were at work and we see on the TV, there is Houston Humane Society in Fort Bend County around this property and Katie seizing over 200 animals from this property. It was Angie's. David immediately took off his uniform and left work uh, to go to her house to assist or whatever. And uh, she is currently still under investigation with Fort Bend County for a cruelty case, about 29 counts. And they seized, I think, a total of 229 that day. Shortly after that is when I really started seeing a lot of things ramping up that I personally was not okay with. Um, I'd get to work on a Saturday and David would say, we need to go to Rosenberg and pick up some of Angie's dogs. Why? They should be going to Houston Humane. Um, or we need to go to this Katie property again. Some cats were left behind. She found some more. We got to bring them here. Why? There's an investigating agency involved. They should be informed of this. Um, and then animals kind of just started appearing with like fake calls entered into our computer aided dispatch system about them. I knew these were Angie's dogs, but they're being claimed as roaming free in Katie and found stray. Uh, she would leave me voicemails asking me to call vets offices uh, to have uh, rabies paperwork changed into my name. And I wasn't comfortable with that. And the final straw uh, was when uh, we were sitting around and, and David mentioned, and it's on camera, that Angie Wells owed him $50,000 for his assistance. And I said to you directly. Personal? Yeah. And so I was going to ask, personally? He responded, yes. And she also said she would make a huge donation to the city. We could use a new truck. And what? a light bulb went off 
this is bribery and I don't want to be anywhere near it. And that's when I um, sought out the chief for my first meeting with him. Okay. And so, Claudine, at this point, you hadn't been uh, uh, privy to any of this yet. No, so no. I was not a, a person in that timeline. I was, I met Chelsea in the, maybe, maybe January of 2020. Okay. Some early. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. It was right when she went on leave of absence. Got it. Like, so, so. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stop here. Um, we're going to do another segment. I want to do the introduction of this, but this is uh, fascinating stuff. We'll be back um, with a second um, uh, a, a second segment. And uh, thank you two for joining and, and we'll see you all next time.